Hi there. Welcome to the Kessler Law Firm podcast. I'm your host, Michael Kessler, and I'm joined today by my good friend, Cliff Barnes. Cliff, what's new? Well, I had a success in a case. I wanted to share it with the whole legal world. Oh, that's great. Is this another one of those cases that couldn't be won? Yeah, this is an unwinnable case, and we didn't go to trial, so we didn't completely win it, but we had a partial surrender by the state. Well, that's great. Tell us about it. Well, this is a young lady, uh, I believe she was 19 at the time. She's driving dad's car home from Archie's where she worked. And there's an officer right behind her, coincidentally, not because she was driving poorly, but he watched her from a distance farther away, uh, drive up onto the sidewalk and then back down. And as you know, in Fort Pierce, our sidewalks are for pedestrians, at least usually. So uh, he I think continues. we can agree that they're not for cars and not. No. So he gets a little closer to her. And about that time, she hits a parked car. So he doesn't need to observe any more driving pattern. She then backs up, according to the officer, and tries to leave the scene. Now, uh, Cliff, and- this, this parked car that she hit, it was not up on the sidewalk. No, it was next to the sidewalk. Ah, okay. On Sunrise Boulevard, you know, the diagonal road that sure. it goes off US-1. So he figures he uh, better stop her from leaving. He does. He claims that he smells a fruity alcohol beverage. But as you know, alcohol itself, there's no odor. So right. it's another one of those. I detected an odor of alcohol, even though alcohol doesn't have an odor. But so she had a full-blown, it seemed just a total meltdown, emotional meltdown there at the scene. I think every police officer in Fort Pierce that was awake was at the scene. It is 3 a.m. Um, everybody's there. Everybody's wearing body cams. And she ends up, uh, they ask her to take a breathalyzer. She refuses. Um, she keeps demanding that her father be present and that she needs a lawyer before she answers any questions. So when I first get the case, I put it in the unwinnable category, especially since we had a driver's license hearing. There was plenty of probable cause if the officers were telling the truth. And so I feared that we would lose our driver's license almost automatically. But as you have shown me, Sometimes you show up in those hearings and when the state doesn't do their job or the police in this case, your client can actually win these hearings and keep their driver's license. So absolutely the same police department Fort Pierce police, the officers somehow didn't get their paperwork in order. And so she got to keep her license. So then we dealt with only the criminal case. Well, criminal case looked bad enough based on, you know, the police report. But we did order from uh, the police department through the Freedom of Information Act, the videos of all the officers and their body cams. Very good. Fascinating. Fascinating what doesn't make the police reports, but which will be prime material at a jury trial. Let Um, me let me take a wild guess. The contents of the body cam don't quite exactly dovetail with the police report well they yeah it wasn't that bad it's just that when i talked to her father she's only 19 she's driving his car she says and she had told the officer she's got a history of depression and anxiety and he said look my daughter just probably had a nervous breakdown right there on the scene and you know i've been trying to treat her for this anxiety problem But the problem is they're treating her with herbs and not pharmaceuticals. So really, it doesn't do much good for her condition. So between that explaining her meltdown and her statement to the police that she didn't have any alcohol to drink, you're then left with a chance. And it turns out that she provided me a picture of the inside of her car when she got it out of impound, which showed that there were indeed chicken wings scattered everywhere from her work she had on the seat beside her, which certainly 
trying to eat chicken wings with one hand and steer with the other is probably more dangerous than having a couple drinks and putting both hands on the wheel and both eyes on the road. So those chicken wings took her up on the sidewalk and then those chicken wings took her into the back of another person's car. And as far as the smell of alcohol, they had a trainee and he, this was during the first of COVID and he had a mask on and I think she had a mask on. And the, the superior officer kept telling him to go and smell her breath did and kept suggesting that there was the smell of alcohol and the officer two or three times said, but I can't smell it. I don't smell any alcohol. <laughs> so, so what we have here is really lousy driving. Um, but the problem is it's late at night and officers are going to assume that you're intoxicated when you're on the road at 3 a.m. and you run into a parked car. So there, you know, when you said, is it, is it, is it, way off of what was written in the report. It wasn't that far off. They just interpreted the whole scene differently than an uninterested observer like her lawyer might. Right. So she was actually guilty of driving while noshing. I guess that's what it would be. But anyway, the state, uh, after two years, they finally agreed on a reduced charge to reckless off of a DUI with property damage. Very good. And she walked out owing money and she got to keep her license. And uh, it was a good compromise for everybody. Job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and thanks for taking the time to talk with us about it. Absolutely. Again, it, it just shows if, if you believe in your client and you listen to them and their relatives, sometimes uh, if you're not too jaded, you'll see that things aren't quite the same that they first appear. And you have to recognize, sometimes we have to remind ourselves, the police report is not necessarily the gospel truth. And even if everything in it is true, it's certainly not the whole story. It is not. And uh, so you got the body cam and you actually watched it and saw things that changed the complexion of the case, things you could use to change the outcome of the case. That's correct. Without the body cam footage, I might have been tempted to allow her to plead to DUI but sure because without the body cam footage you would have thought the odor of alcohol was truly there it would have been her word against theirs and you know they wouldn't have been wishy-washy at trial it would have been a a definite fact in their minds sure so well thank you very much onward and upward and on to more challenges to the next unwinnable case thank you that's right Well, thank you. And thank you all for joining us for the Kessler Law Firm podcast. If you're watching this on social media like YouTube or somewhere else, please click on the subscribe button so you'll know when new episodes of our podcast are available.